Welcome to Building a Better Shooter. This is a new series that I'm gonna be doing. It's gonna be a monthly update, giving you kind of a peek behind the curtain of kind of what goes in to compete in USPSA at whatever level it is that I compete at. What you can expect from the show is a monthly update. You'll have a look at my training, possibly get some tips and tricks, maybe some mini reviews, a recap of news, both industry and game related, an interview with some kind of high speed personality. This month is Matt Hopkins, a synopsis of the videos that I released this month, and of of course, we'll finish with my favorite memes. If you want to submit memes, make sure I see them on Instagram. Tag me in the comments of your favorite memes and it'll give me something to look at for next month. So first things first is a training update. So as many of you who follow the channel know, I recently switched to Open Division with the Bull Armory SAS2 Ultimate Racer. So switching to Open had a couple adjustments to what a carry optic shooter is typically used to. Now, as far as carry optics is concerned, it is a minor only division, which means you do have to work to get all of the alphas. Whereas with Open, if there are two on brown, you're generally gonna be okay. And that is a major adjustment to how you approach each of the targets. You really do have to attack them and be comfortable dropping Charlie. Since Charlies are acceptable in major, uh, you've got a lot more freedom to sh be dynamic. And so what I'm doing is really trying to switch to more of a super hard target focus and shooting almost by feeling and then just calling my shots as opposed to giving it a glimpse of a sight picture and knowing that it's good, just relying on my index more and trusting that that's gonna net Alphas and Charlie. That's easier said than done, and in my first match, I uh, would slow down and turtle up. If something went wrong, I would default to kind of my carry optics roots, and I'd sit back and shoot points. As a result, I shot 94% of points available in my first uh, open match. I came in six overall at the match behind a few M's and G's, and I had three no shoots. So uh, if the no shoots went away, my points would have jumped up even higher, and I would have been like 93% on the match as opposed to 89 at where I finished. So I worked pretty hard on the getting used to that and getting more comfortable shooting things on the move, but I've got a long way to go. The next big adjustment is the open belt is different from the carry optics belt, at least it used to be before they updated the rules in USPSA. So I moved all of my magazines further forward. I have a front magnet kit on my gun and I'm reloading from about the 1130 position, basically straight down from your support side nipple is where my first mag pouch is. And it works great for me because I've got really tight shoulders and uh, my reload consistency from this location has gone up dramatically but I still reach to my, uh, I guess that's a nine o'clock position on my hip to try and reload. So I'm still learning it. There's still a lot of meat on that bone to improve on, but I made big strides. And when I do hook up on my reloads, they are appreciably faster than going all the way to the nine o'clock position. So that's another thing that I'm gonna be continuing to work on. Through shooting the match, it showed me some of the skills that I need to work on, uh, and that's mainly staying dynamic. Uh, hitting a position where there can be up to like three targets, where you shoot on the move, kind of entering the position, and you sort of stay moving a little bit for the middle target and then exit while moving on the last target. So it's only like three steps, but driving the gun hard and staying in motion and not coming to a rest. So that's a skill that I'm gonna be working on. Another skill that I'm gonna be working on is just building confidence shooting steel on the move at like 10 to 15 yards. So I'll probably be doing a lot of plate racks uh, shooting on the move, just trying to see what I can get away with when shooting at things like that. And the final thing that I'll be doing to really transition to become a new open shooter is shooting at like 25 yards and just hammering on targets at 25 yards, trusting that the compensator and my grip and my load are gonna return the dot to the target. So I'm gonna be doing lots of shooting at longer distances with the open gun because the accuracy from these open guns, specifically this bull is insane. I mean one whole groups are absolutely possible. And with the way the compensator returns the gun from recoil, I really can get more aggressive shooting like sub 30 splits at 25 yards, keeping it in the A zone. So I just have to get comfortable at that cadence and have that become my new normal. So that's gonna be the three big things that I focus on on my training rolling into the next match. And for the little mini review that I'm gonna throw in this month, it is going to be the Casey Reed shooting True Coach app. Now True Coach is a website that's intended to be used 
used by physical trainers. However, Casey Reed uh, set up daily workouts that you can do in dry fire. And what's interesting is he really meets you where you are. He's got three tiers that you can sign up for. He's got a D or C class shooter, a B or A, and then an MGM. And he has different part times for all of the dry fire. And basically the way it works is you log into the website and every day there are going to be six exercises. The first exercise is always the same. It's always his CRS warm up, which is basically uh, trigger control at speed, both freestyle, strong hand and weak hand, then warming up with some draws. Then he gets into more of his kind of gun handling centric drills where there will be two to three drills uh, focusing on gun handling stuff. And he absolutely does a great job of varying what your presentations are. He'll have like simulated seven yards and simulated 25 yards where you can work on uh, engaging targets at different distances. He'll work in some reloads. He challenges all sorts of different start positions, talking about starting with your hands on the barricade, wrists above shoulder, unloaded, started on a table or barrel. He has reloads from barrels. He has a lot of uh, variety that he's worked in, and I can tell you that my non-conventional start game is significantly better than it was because I thought I was training that enough, and it turns out it wasn't anywhere near enough. And he always finishes with a couple drills on moving, which is a big deal for the MGM. Now, I'm signed up at the M or GM level, so I really don't know what the... Uh, other tiers are like as far as the mix of drills that he's working in, but I gotta believe that they are varied. The one kind of criticism that I'll make is when there are modifiers like uh, working in reloads, he doesn't work that into the part time. So if he says at the beginning how he's modifying the drill with like, yes, all divisions must reload after this drill, you need to look at whatever the part time is and add what an aggressive reload would be coming back to a, a single shot on the final target you engage. It's not hard to do, so I just look at whatever the drill time is and add you know, 1.1 to 1.2 seconds, depending on how froggy I'm feeling, and then let it go. It's been a really great tool to use in dry fire, and it's only about 15 bucks a month after the first three days being free. It's not that much money, and it is a nice structured program if you're gonna put in the effort and don't want to think about your training. It's kinda nice, uh, 15 bucks is you know less than what most of these books cost, and uh, you only pay month to month, you can cancel at any time. So I've gotten a pretty good amount of value and I say I can recommend the Casey Reed True Coach system if you're already doing dry fire or if you're looking to get started, but you really do need to be dry firing between like four to seven days a week. And I believe his sessions are set up where you can throw like three to five minutes per drill and get a pretty good workout. So tackling the news, uh, if you're watching this video, you are already aware that USPSA updated their rules and the changes were pretty immense and it went over like a fart in church, unfortunately. I, I believe they had every intention of putting their heart in the right place and truly trying to meet shooters where they were at who got out at their first match but there was a little bit of short-sightedness with with some of the changes and specifically the change I'm speaking to is the weapon mounted light I know that because two manufacturers have told me that they are making brass flashlights to be glorified frame weights for use in competition. The data that we don't have right now is just how much those frame weights are going to affect the pistol divisions, and I'm going to be doing a video this month testing that with a Shadow 2, an LTT, and a Glock, just to see how much difference the frame weight is going to make on the guns. The other changes is they're now allowing appendix in all divisions, which also unlock the ability to have all of your your mag pouches in carry optics production and single stack be forward of your hip bone so everybody can basically run the open rig with like a magnet. The magnet is probably not going to change the state of play in the local matches, the level ones. It is probably going to affect how the level two and three and even level four matches are because any match with a mags on barrel start uh, you're gonna need a magnet because that's a big advantage, but even just unloaded starts like stepping into the box and loading the gun, if you start on a front magnet kit on your first pouch, your, your reload is already gonna be in the same position, so it doesn't affect your hand going down to the magazines at all. So a magnet makes a lot of sense. I'm sure most of the people listening to this have already purchased magnets for their belt. That was a little bit disruptive, uh, but people didn't seem to be too upset by it. They raised the weight limit in single stack up to 45 ounces, which makes 9mm guns more viable, which I think is probably a good thing. 
And so as you can probably guess, most of the memes I've picked for this month are going to relate to those rule changes. And a couple industry updates that competitive shooters will find interesting. Sig Sauer released the Romeo P320 Max, which is basically the gussied up version of the Legion P320 with the tungsten grip module gussied up by Max Michel himself to come with the Sig Romeo 3 Max for 21 round magazines to be ready to race in carry optics division, despite the magwell that you have to remove move and ignore like it never showed up. Walter announced the PDP, which introduces a proper full-sized gun into the Walter lineup. Previously, people kind of slagged the PPQ because the grip is a little bit shorter than a proper full-sized gun, and now they've rectified that with the PDP, which is available in a full-length grip, and all of them come optics ready. So that's kind of interesting and sort of indicates the direction of the industry, which I think optics are great and I'm excited to see it. And this is a bit of an older piece of news, but CZ has released the Tactical Sport 2, which is gonna be the update, kind of like the Shadow 2 to the Shadow 1 for the Tactical Sports platform. However, they're only available now in nine millimeter, which is a bit of a letdown for the sport shooters, but I'm sure all of the accountants and dentists in the CZ Facebook groups will be really, really happy. But I'm sure the gun is amazing. I've shot the Tactical Sports Orange. It's a fantastic limited gun. Uh, considering the price point on it, you get a lot of gun for the money. So I'm sure once that 40 caliber hits the streets, we'll have a new contender in limited division. So we're also gonna talk results from the recent major matches. And at the time of filming this, there have only been really one major match and that is the Florida Open. But more interesting than the Florida Open is the 2021 Superstition Mystery Mountain three gun match where Nils Jonasson basically wiped the floor with everyone. Uh, he beat Jerry, he beat Josh Froelich, he is a beast and he's predominantly a pistol shooter. So I found that very interesting that Nils, who has shot some three gun in his time, was able to go and take home the high overall. And the Florida Open, as you can imagine, was largely dominated by optic shooters with 48 carry optic shooters and a staggering 78 open shooters. It's generally always been an open shooters match. Being this early in the season, generally people who can afford to shoot open guns and keep them fed are more likely to go to very early matches so that's why you probably see so many shooters in open in that match. Production limited and PCC all kind of rounded out between about 30 and 35 shooters and the match was 10 stages with an entry fee of I believe $250 so it's a bit of a pricey match to get into. What was interesting is all of the heat that showed up for the match. The match was absolutely filled with M and GM caliber shooters with about 30 to 40 percent in each division being at least a master rating, which is titanically large. So out of respect for people's privacy, I'm not gonna give full names to non-professional shooters, but if these are guys who make their living pulling triggers, then I'm happy to throw their name out. And to that point, Open was taken by Shannon Smith, who bested JJ Rakaza by about 2%, which is pretty interesting considering just how fast JJ is. And Shannon refers to himself as getting up there in the years himself, although I think they're both on the World Shoot team in Open again. Carry Optics was won handily by Trace D, who beat Jeff E by about 5%. Shane Coley brought home the trophy for Team Glock in limited division, beating the Army Marksmanship Unit's John Browning by about 2%. And Sal Luna absolutely decimated the field in in production, winning by about 15%. It's an Ipsic style match and Sal spends most of the year shooting Ipsic matches all over the world, so it's not that surprising that he ran away with it, but good grief did he run away with it. Next month, we're gonna have a lot more matches to talk about, including our first glimpse at an area match with Area 6 taking place, but there's also the Dragon's Cup in Odessa, Texas, the South Carolina State Section, and the Sugar Cane Classic out in Louisiana. As far as an interview this month, I got the pleasure of sitting down with Matt Hopkins. Uh, there was done via live stream right here on this channel, and I'll put a link so you can watch the whole video for all of the context, but uh, we talked about some of the things that goes into building a better shooter and we really kind of moved from what it takes to go from just entering the game and being kind of that DC class shooter to being sort of the middle pack guy, the BA, and then what it takes to go from like M to GM. And what Matt had to say was basically the basics are fundamental and you have to have a basis of accuracy, being able to hit all the targets on the range before you even begin thinking about speed. 
At the middle of the pack, Matt thought that shooting a match clean, being able to shoot penalty free, hitting all the things and beginning to think about speed. However, stage planning wasn't going to factor into it too much. So uh, honestly, I think to be successful in CMB class, you literally got to be able to shoot without penalties. And you can't be afraid of, no matter what the time is, of hitting any target that's presented to you. So that can actually just go a little further up. Like if you go into B and A class, like you have to hit the targets with some speed, right? No matter what targets out there, like Texas star headshot or anything like that. But like the C and B class guys, I think like if they just go out, shoot a clean match at pace, but there's really no time limit on it at that point. Like if, as long as you're clean and shooting, you're probably going to do very well. And finally, at the M and GM level, he says really the difference between an M and a GM comes down to consistency and how often you can hook up on the times that people who shoot M and GM can both shoot at about the same speed, but the GMs are going to do it more consistently, and it really comes down to being able to hook up on points and trying to hundo the classifiers. You have to increase your pace from B to A to M, right? So each level there is a different pace. So you have to, so I had to be very like, very deliberate and like just working on speed. So I'm, I'm a turtle like from the very beginning, like I could go out and hit every single target, no matter what, when I was competing in B class in production and just break, like I won every, I think every match I ever shot in B class production, I think. But it was because I could literally go out to every single match and hit every single target and the time didn't matter. But when I wanted to progress beyond that, I had to physically like make myself go faster and learn how to go faster. So G, you got to be as fast as you possibly can and you have to be consistent. The biggest step from M to GM like at a performance level and like match placement level is a consistency, right? This is what everybody talks about. Oh, an M can do whatever a GM can do, it's just more consistent. Like I think there is a little increase speed and i think that comes from the consistency so you can always do a 1.1 draw no matter if it's a five yard target or a 25 yard target right that might be a little dramatic but yeah you kind of get what i'm saying right right so like the draw is the same every time you're not going to fumble reloads you're going to hit like you're going to do perfect reloads you're going to like you're going to know your you're going to basically know what you can execute on moving targets and stages. So you're going to know how to navigate stages as good as you can for you. So check out the link and you can follow that and watch the whole interview yourself. Matt's also throwing his hat in the ring for the Area 3 Director position, which is coming available to vote this year. So check out his article in Front Sight Magazine and you can learn more about him. He's a really good dude and he'd make a great Area 3 Director. So boiling down the videos on my channel that you'd be interested in this month, it was a good month for practical shooting videos. Probably the most uh, practical or tactical, if you will, was the difference between major and minor power factors. Actors, talking about the philosophy of shooting major versus shooting minor. The guys in the CZ groups love to talk about shooting limited with 9mm guns, which is a totally viable thing to do, but if you're actually competing, like trying to win matches, you, you got to shoot major. And that video kind of shows you why you have to shoot major in a division where major is offered, excepting single stack because that's kind of a rare bird. You can watch my review on the Bull Armory Ultimate Racer. The Ultimate Racer is a really awesome open gun uh, available at a great price. And it's kind of right at that kind of $3,500 mark. So it's still a very expensive and very nice gun, but it's not completely unreachable to most like... Uh, most of the other brands of open guns are out there, so we boiled that down in a review that you can check out. You can watch my first match shooting USPSA with that bull open gun and how that went. I those six out of however many people shot the match. Uh, it was a good time. On the gear front, I reviewed the Ghost the 1S and Ultimate Evo, which are both locking race holsters, so there's a, a video there talking about the differences there. Ghost was kind enough to offer up a discount code of gear up 10 if you're into Ghost products. Uh, there is a good way to save some cash on them over at ghostholsterdirect.com. With their rig builder stuff specifically, there's already like a 10% discount as opposed to buying a la carte. So 
With that code, you can really get a good deal on some stuff over at Ghost Holster Direct. And back at the beginning of the month, I dropped my second video in the Shoot Like a Boss series on the trigger manipulation. So if you're just getting into practical shooting, that'd be a great place to start to learn about the different kind of trigger control and trigger discipline required to excel at the sport. And bringing us home with my favorite memes of the month. There were a lot of good memes this month, but these were the ones I happened to write down to remember to show you guys. Uh, the flashlights, yeah, they showed up in some memes. IDPA was left out of memes with the uh, flashlights and appendix carry. Joe Biden gave the gun store $1,400 to many across the country. My boy Firepower United uh, shot some two reload two drills with three flashlights hanging off his gun, which was truly comical. And Hammer and Sear brings us home with all of the PCC shooters making fun of carry optics and production shooters with their flashlights. So like I say, if you see some spicy memes floating around on the gram, add me on the gram and tag me in some of those posts and I'll see if I can't include them in next month's. So that's what I've got for you guys. Check back at the end of next month. Uh, I'm gonna be launching the audio of this as a podcast. There should be a link in the description to where you can follow us on all of the podcast apps and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks guys.